again guys, this is the next one in my tutorials. I will now, this time, be showing you some very good modeling tricks for doing some very simple but necessary architectural inerts, I guess you would call it. We'll just have a sofa table, a little accoutrement for the table itself, so like a bowl or glass or something, just random, I'll figure that out later. Uh, we'll have like a standing lamp, that's just easy stuff, again, small stable stuff. I don't know why I have it twice, maybe I just didn't want to sound annoying with the accoutrement thing. And a little bookcase that you put on the walls, some books, which are very simple to do, but I don't know, they're just very nice to get them proper. And bookends, which are just small little things that hold the books up, and a rug, just a very simple way to do a rug. So, let's get started off with the sofa. So, I have most of my influences here. You don't want to get influences before you start doing stuff. It's just easier to work off of it. And this is kind of the thing I want. Just basic sectional sofa, long ends, a little bit of a table on the sides for it. Nice little, I like this armrest, I really do. But it's a very simple. I don't really want this like bulge in it, which is kind of nice, but I don't really want that. I want it more squared off. But I will show you how to do that properly. So, let's start it up, and again, I'll show you how to do these cushions and this back plate. It's very simple. First, what I like doing is, I like creating a box to show me my area that I'll be using up. So, I have already, I read on the uh, website that the dimensions for this coach were 123 by 83 by 16. Now, you'll be thinking that's not right, but what it is actually is, this 123 is this length and the 83 is this length. So really I'm going to need to have two, if you can see it back in here. This is a 123, this is the 83 inch one, and this is probably 24 inches deep. Just probably about two feet. So let's go back to there. And I'll do 30 inches. I'll do two and a half feet. Yeah, two and a half feet deep. 16 inches is usually the top of the height, but however it's this is usually two inches down here, four inches here, and six inches here. Well, this is a bit different one. Might be smaller, but we'll figure that out as we go. Usually the cushions are six inches deep. These are four and these are two, so this is a shorter couch. So we'll say 12 inches. But again, shorter couch, we'll figure that out later. So this is the back plate of the couch. Two inches just for the size of it. Because we want. And this looks like a 10 inch back plate, a little 2 inch place to sit. We want the pillow place to nice, rest nicely, however we don't want to take all of it up. So, 30 inches should suffice. Now, let's drop you back there. And I'm just going to clone this one out. Turn an angle snapping. And this will be the 83 inch one, not instance. Clone it. 3. And now I'll be going the other way. Like that. So right now, if we go on top of you, we can easily set them up one after another, kind of like that. And that's just for the size of it. Now we'll actually start building it. Because this is a sectional sofa, one here, one here, one here, one here, this looks like it will actually be better being built out of different polygons. Excuse me, I'm thirsty. This will be built out of polygons, so we'll have box for this, 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 box, 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 box. Sometimes it's easier to build it out of single polygons, however this one looks like it's going to be better to build out of two. It's going to be a bit different because we're going to have box with this one coming out right from down here. I'm pretty sure this side would have it too, I can't see it, but I can see it having it. It'll be almost the exact same as this, just a bit shorter. So we'll have a box, we'll have a huge armrest that goes along the back, so we'll have to probably make this whole bottom piece one. And then we'll have this piece, this piece, the pillows in the back. So let's start making this this bottom piece one. As I said, this is about two in now I'll say this is about four inches high. So as you can see, that's gonna be that piece. And I'm gonna convert it to an little poly. Do this. Oh, that's supposed to be edge. I hate how my mouse flickers. Connect the edges and drag it over. Go on top here. Drag it up until it's about even with that. You can turn on snapping if you want, just hitting the S key and aligning to a pivot or something. However, 
It's not going to be too necessary. That's pretty good right there. And we'll take this polygon, extrude it out, computer slow down a bit, and drag it out to here. Alright, so that is going to be that piece. Zoom in on it, and there we go. Next thing we'll want to do is the backrest, but first we need to know how long this is. I'm saying this is about, eh, about a foot and a half. So yeah, I'll say this is about 18 inches for stuff to go here, and I'll leave the same here. So, we will make a box. 18 inches, this is just for sizing it up. Man, my... That's going crazy. This is just to see how far in that we need it. And this will be 16 inches. So that will be the edge of it. This other piece here will be, well, these pieces right here. Now, the best way to tackle this probably would be to go here, ring, connect this up, and then move this thing, this edge down to here with this, take the polygons here and here, and detach them. Uh, it's not good. Shift drag them. Yeah. Attaching them won't work. Shift drag them, you'll clone to an object, and we'll say couch cushion one. So now we have another object to build our cushions off of, and we'll do it again for this side. However, we want this little 16 inches here, so we'll move him over just to get this is just for sizing. He'll be deleted soon after. And rotate him so we get the size right. Drop them over here. Ring connect. And I would highly advise making a hockey for the ring and connect. It's used a lot. I don't have a hockey on this computer, however, on my regular production computer I do. I just deleted out that thing that says we don't need it anymore. The one for the size. So let's go to polygon again. Drag him up and an object and coach cushion one too. Okay. So now we have our cushions. And first what I'm gonna do with them is put a shell modifier on them. Let's go down to shell modifier. And I said they would be what? Six inches deep, six inches high, so we'll put another amount of six inches on them. These will be our cushions, and this will be again shell material, six inches. Of course we're going to have to leave this all up, but that's, we'll nicely put it in there. First, however, center the pivots to the object. Nothing hates, I hate more than a pivot that's way off from the object. And since this is six high, this is four high, this should probably sit at six, seven, sit right on top of there. Now, that is that. Actually, I did it poorly. I forgot to take out the... Apologies for that. I forgot to take out the backplate of it. Right here. The armrests. I apologize very much. Let's do that first. You want to build your topology of your coach on the bottom layer, and then you can just keep breaking out the pieces. Like I was doing, however, I forgot to take out the backplate. So we'll have that much for... That'll be this. That'll be this piece here. And now we're gonna make the back plate. So I'm gonna do it over here. And we can connect. Man, it's hard to see my mouse. I don't know why it's going crazy. It does not like this program. Oh, my screen re screen recorder. All right. And now the back plate. What I'm gonna do is make another box for this. Just to. So we can easily set up the uh, sizing of it, because both sides should be the same. And 8 inch back plate, that leaves us, since this is 30 inches, with 22 inches. It should be way more than enough, because the couch cushion will take a 4, and they'll leave us with 18 inches, which is good. So, go under here to the edges, ring around, connect them. Okay, 
drag it over. And now let's put this right here. Drop it here. Get these things. Bring it again and connect it again. And then drag it back to there. And now we have the topology for our couch worked out. Because I'll select some pieces just to show you. This will be our one cushion. This will be this big cushion. This will be this smaller cushion. This will have to make as another box. And then we'll have the pillows and, of course, the other stuff. Okay, so... Take these boxes out. We should only need this one box right here. And now... Now we'll go under the polygon tool. And that will be our one. And this one I will shift drag up again, like we did before. This is Coach Cushion at one. And go to this one. Take the polygons. Shift drag them up. And this is Coach Cushion at two. I cannot spell probably, but whatever. Now we will work on the pulleys back plates up. So it'll be this piece, this piece, this piece, this piece. And now we're going to start working on the edges. So extrude this up. Well, since the couch cushions are 6 inches, this looks like the same height, so this is 6 plus 6 is 12 inches all the way up. Okay, so that's good. And now there's a bit of a slight decline in them, so we will take these vertices that are on this side. I'm just going to find them, these vertices. Drag them back a bit. I don't want all of them though, I just want the top layer. Drag this back a bit. We'll take these top vertices over here. These ones I'm pretty sure. Oop. Nope. There we go, those vertices. We don't want that vertice back there. Actually, yeah we do. And we'll drag those back like that. So now there's a bit of a... well in the coach to let it, you know, slope back a bit. Now we're going to smooth out these hard edges because as you can see, no one likes hard edges. So first what I'm going to do is Alt-Q to isolate it so that we can just work in this. And now turn on the interim subdivision. And you can see it just destroys it. However, we can start inserting edge loops to make it better. So the more edge loop, where you insert an edge loop does have a dependency on where it subdivides. The edge is closer to the other edges, so if we go, I'll just be easier to show you. Two segments, we'll pinch them out to the far edges. This will tighten up the edge because it'll smooth this edge, but this edge will be here to stop the smoothing as well. So you'll get, as I want to turn on your subdivision or subdivision surfaces, you'll see it's a harder edge. And we're going to go through this and do it for most of these things. So we got that edge hardened up. It's a nice little edge there. However, you can see this edge is wrong, this edge is wrong, this edge and most of these edges. So let's start doing this. So we we'll want to harden up this edge, connect it up, and yeah we want to harden up this edge too so we'll pinch it out, take two connections, pinch it out to about 90. It should be good. Turn the nerve subdivision to see how good it is and it's hardening up very nicely. Uh, we also want to harden up this edge but not as much. Just I kind of want a nice little, and we only need one segment because we're going to be looping it like that. And turn on the room subdivision. As you can see, it's kind of hard. And we'll turn off the isolating cage so you can see it better. But you can see the smoothness in there. Now I'll turn it back on. This is the cage, so cage, and F4 to turn back on my wireframe. And I want to clean up this back here. So turn off the room subdivision. Take it edge loop here, bring it, connect it, and then I did want to slide it first, connect it, and slide it over to right there. And that will be for this edge, the trying to subdivision. You can see it's a nice little, it's going to be a harder edge down there because that's more of a wooden area I find. See it's more it's harder down there. They put a cushion on it, I don't like that as much. 
on really kind of rigid. All right, so now let's start with this area. We want to kind of tighten up this edge and this top edge. So connect it up. Slide it all the way over to about there. So it's nice and tight. And we're going to want to tighten up this top part here too. So ring, connect it. And slide it all the way over to about there. Turn on arms, turn on and off arms. You can see it tightening up very nicely. Now we're going to have to tighten up this top edge. So we're going to ring around it again. Connect it up. And drag it over to about negative 70. That'll leave the bit pretty smooth, but it won't completely harden it off. And we're going to have to do it again on this inside. So ring around, connect it up, and up to about there. And we'll let it a bit more for smoothing it. We're going to have to do this again for the bottom part. As you can see, it's just putting edges near other edges to tighten up the edges so when it smooths out, it doesn't to completely destroy the topology of it. And if I turn on Nerm Subdivision, you can see that's looking actually quite nice right there. So we'll turn off the cage, and we'll turn off wireframe. As you can see, pretty smooth up there. Nice little top part. And a heavy black plate. Very well done right there. So turn on my cage again, and turn on my wireframe. Turn off Nerm Subdivision. Alright, so now we're going to have to do it right here, clean up this one. So, take this edge, bring it and connect it again, and drag it over to it there. This edge we're going to have to again connect up, and I'm going to do one on either side, and pinch them out. As you can see, that'll tighten up this corner right here, and this will tighten up this corner up here. Check it out, hit your subdivision, and as you see, it's slowly coming along. Alright, so all we have left to do is this, this, and this up here. So let's start doing these. Bring that, connect it, and not that much. We want a bit more of a easier loop line. So about around 60, I think, was my last one. And this one we will connect up. I don't want to actually. Yes, I do. I don't have another inch over here, so we'll go ahead and even those up. As you can see, those two are about even. It's okay. It's not supposed to be perfect, but the closer you get it, the better because, I mean, it's supposed to look like a couch. It's supposed to look like it's one, not supposed to look like it's 20 pieces. And connect that up. Drag it over. And now the last one is right here. And as you see, drag it over to about there. As you can see, when I turn off, turn on my net subdivision, turn on my cage, and turn on my wireframe, so you got a kind of a nice couch back. You got rid of most of your edges, and when you're looking from about afar, from about here. This out. You can tell that it's smooth, but it's not too smooth. Once you put a nice material on there, you won't even notice. Alright. So that is going to be the bottom of it. Now I'm going to undo my isolation so I can see other things. And these are going to be the couch cushions. And I need a shell on this as before. Six inches. It's a big shell, but I mean, that's what it is. That's really high up, and that's the way it is. Kind of crazy. And we need a shell for you for 60. And you know the pivots again. If you have the other ones that I made before, accidentally take those out. Drop these down to 7 because that should be the height, not 87, 7. And 7. Alright, so that is that. Now let's start making these cushions. Now the cushions are supposed to look a lot more cushiony, so oh, shall I'm going to have to collapse it down to there, just so I can start using this as my complete 
and it will fall. You can convert it to or you can collapse it to, it doesn't really matter. That collapses it to an edible mesh, so actually it's better to convert to edible poly. Because that's the only thing I like working with. Alright. Now, let's start working on this. So as we said before, you can use that. You can see it looks like a cushion, but now it just looks flat. It doesn't actually look anything like a cushion. So, what we do is we first, if we zoom on in here, we first make the topology of it. We make it nice and smooth for the edges. Then we put an edible poly modifier on it, and excuse me, we put an edible poly modifier on it. Chamfer out these two edges so we can get this nice little ring around it on both sides. So this little ring here for the leather for the seam, and then from that on we turbo smooth that out. Put another edible poly modifier on it, extrude it out, turbo smooth that, and use the modifier stack to our advantage. So let's get to it. First, what we'll do is either clean this up a bit for the topology and then smooth it out. So, ring connected up and drag it out. We move it on the big cushiony, so about to there. Ring this, connect it up, and two. That should be probably pretty good. Let's check out how it looks with the turbo smooth on it, which we will be using. And that looks pretty good. We're going to have to clean up this one, but here, yeah, of course. Um, ring that up, connect it. No, it's one right now. And put the same edge over, so about like that. And we also want to connect up this one. There. I want to connect up this back plate. there, and then connect up this one here. Oh, jeez. Sorry about that. It's hard to see my mouse. It's flickering. I don't know why it's doing that. It's kind of annoying. Okay, that's that. And ring. Connect. And move over just a touch like that. So, we will turn on the triple smooth and show you how that looks. There we go, a nice little cushion cushion. And you can tell it's a bit less harsh of the corners than these, and we'll start putting some seams on to make it look nice. So we'll use this modifier pack to our exact modifier stack to our advantage. Put an edible poly on it, go into the edge face mode, and turn on the things, and select these two edges around the top and around the bottom. So loop it probably won't loop because of these corners right here, which are five, so they're Holes, so I'm going to all cue this to get to this view. Oh, I screwed that up. But as we use an edible poly turbo smooth edible poly modifier, go down to the edible poly modifier. You see all that turbo smooth holding back. Turn on your edge, connect it up, I'll ring and connect, and drag it all the way to about there. And this is the beauty of using modifier stack. Go back to here, cleans it right up, just like new. So you and we'll select all these edges at the top and we're going to turn J to turn off my bounding box so I can see what I'm doing I like using have it on but when it's coming into circles like that and my mouse is flickering like a crazy cracker it's just not good okay and loop it and that's the top one and now let's get the bottom one one, two, maybe this one right here, this one right here. Loop it, see which one I'm missing. Missing this one, and missing this one. Loop. Alright, now we chamfer these out to get a nice little, not that much, just a nice little chamfer, about one, just to get our seam. Select it, shift, I think it's shift or control click polygon. Uh, no. Dang. Uh, shift click, yeah, shift click polygon. So you get the polygons that are bounded within the two edges. So that's a just quick way to do it so you don't have to reselect them. So when you have your, so when you have your edges, you chain from, straight after you chain from, control click, 
No. Undo that. Shift click polygon, not control click. So shift click polygon and it gives you this. If you accidentally control click, you also could have gone shrunk and it would have shrunk it down. So let's do that. I'll just do that to show you. Control to polygon and go shrink and it shrinks right down to that. Just nice little tricks that you can use very well. So from this one, we'll extrude these out just a touch. So about, extrude them about 0.15. See that nice little right there? Press OK. Turn off the edit of a poly modifier, hit it turbo smooth. And there you go. Bump up the iterations to two. And there you go. You have a nice little seam going all the way around your couch. Just a really simple seam like that. Nothing too hard, nothing too crazy. What I will do though is drop in another chamfer and another seam. So we have our seam right here. Turbo smooth. Drop another edit poly modifier. And actually I have no idea what I was going to do with this one. Do that out. Turbo smooth that one in there. Edit poly will turn off that turbo smooth. It now looks like a good seam. I don't know why I was going to do another one. No, nope, it's just at a poly turbo smooth. And as you see, you have a nice little ring around it. You can probably put another turbo smooth in there if you wanted to, just to clean it up. Actually, yeah, that's what I was going to do. My bad. So we have our added poly modifier here. Under our added poly modifier here, take these and set them a bit so we can get a nice little hard edge on them. Go to there. And then take our ring. Select this one. Select the ring of them all. That one right down there. And that one right there. Just so we can get a ring of them. So we them. Um, because these are crazy to work with since they're so small. I'm going to have three just so you can see the ring better. There's a break in that one, I don't know why. Don't know why the break's there. Shouldn't be. But it doesn't matter since it's on the back of our coach. Thank God. And connect them up. Oh, I didn't hit ring. I done done my ring. I wonder why that was. Connect them up. Hit one right in the middle, it should be good enough. Now when you hit turbo smooth, there it goes. It's a tighter turbo smooth. And you can actually see the ring of them. And there's a bit of bend in there. Now I'm going to throw another other poly on it. And since not everything is perfect and a lot of coaches are lived in, it kind of looks like a buzz bench, we're going to paint some deformation on there. So you got a push pull on there. As you can see, you can paint deformations. So under other poly, push pull. We'll just drop a push pull value way down. It's a very small, as you can see. And drop our brush size down a bit and our brush strength down a bit. And then you just draw out your push pull that you like on it. And this is the beauty with using the stack, is if you don't like what you just drew out, you can hold Alt to push it in as well. So you just draw it out, hold Alt to push it back in, stuff like that. And if you don't like it, bleed out this set of poly modifier. This with it on, that's with it off and restart from scratch. As I said, that's the beauty of working with the stack. You got that, you can just turn it back on and off. And I did something wrong. Holy jeepers. Okay. Let's turn these on in order again. Hold yes. Turn on. Turn on. Turn on. Don't know why. I'm going to delete that out. As I said, it's the beauty of it. Go back to edit poly and redraw my deformations. So go to push pull, pull value about 1, brush size about 10, and just drag it. Oh, that's a bit too, uh, brush strength about down to 3. Yeah, there we go. Well, to push some of it in, and you can just go crazy with it. And there we go. And that is going to be that. So we'll, I'll key out of that. And now we're going to go work on this other cushion. So this cushion will be a bit faster. I'm just going to be doing it. Or what we could do. But I'm not going to do that. 
You could take this one, duplicate it, and try to fit it down. And because of the modifier stack, it would work. However, I'm not going to worry about that. This is probably just as quick to do it this way for me. So two segments, check it out. Ring, connect it up, two segments. Pinch it out to about there. Check. Ring. No, not that. Just connect. To get this dialog box up, just make sure you hit this little dialog box under here. I know. I expect you already know that, but you might not. So, just for future reference. That's how I'm getting this dialog box to pop up. If you're using anything past, I think it's 2010, they implemented this. So if you're using anything older than that, it'll look a bit different, but it's still the same thing. Put on my turbo smooth. There we go. And I'll put on my another edit poly. Q. I'm going to all Q out of it. So you can see it just went more points. Top one. Yep. Yep, the bottom one. And this time I'm not going to forget these edges, which I screwed up last time. However, they were hidden, and I was lucky enough not to have to worry about it too much. But you shouldn't have mesh like that. That's my own. It's a bad thing I shouldn't do. However. I am pressed for time, so I did it. It's all about trade-off in the end. Take these, chamber them out, and about 0.15. I know about 0.1 I thought it was. 0.1, check, control click polygon, shift click polygon to get to this one. I don't know why I always say control click. Shift click to make sure you get this. If you control click it and then you just hit shrink so you can get this again. Extrude that out by about Point one and it should be extruding everything out. Don't know why it doesn't extrude these out for some reason. But let's make sure we select them. See, there we go. So that's just when we hit control click it wouldn't select them properly. Who cares? Now that they're working. And those work. Those are working. Perfect. Check it out. And then inset this a bit. Inset by oh, 0.5. Take these two edges around here. Ring connect it. Just one right in the middle. And another turbo smooth on it. About two. And there we have another seam, right around the edge of it. Add another edit poly on top of it, and start trying out what you like for your deformations. Push pull, about one, two for the brush size, and about point three for the brush strength. And my computer's really slowed down on it, but you get the idea. There we go. Something that's kind of looked in. I'll cue to that. And there we have our bottom base of our couch. Next we will be making the pillows, which are these, which are very simple. It's almost the exact same as what we do for these. Actually it is the exact same for what we do for these. And then we just plump them up a bit more with our push-pull modifier and an FFD modifier. So, let's save that out. Let's see how long I've been recording this. 34 minutes already, Jesus. Okay, you might just get be getting a couch. Um, I'll do a cushion table and a rug. We'll do box. And the cushions for this couch, they seem that they will be... Let's go about 90. Drop it over here. Let's just try to fit them out nicely. A lot of this is just about fitting it nicely. And we'll probably make them a bit smaller. So yeah, they're about... We'll go with 12, and we'll make them 4 inches deep. So they're pretty nice big plump pillows that'll fit in there nicely. 
So, I'll key it out, move it back to the middle because I can't stand working on something that's off the grid, and rotate it back to zero. So, this is how we'll make the pillows. First convert it to an elbow poly, ring it around both times, connect it up, oh that's not going to work. Ring connects to, a pinch out. These things don't really, because these things we want to be really kind of pluffy. Fluffy, pluffy, poofy, floofy, choofy, noofy, doofy. Close those out. Ring it around, connect it. And only one. Add a turbo on it. One iteration, good enough. Add a poly again. Oh, jeez. Turbo smooth, add a poly. all these up, and it's just the same thing again, just doing up the, oh shoot, I didn't need that one, doing the seams up, and those two, and I need these two, loop it, chain for it, bad boat, point one, check that off, shift click this, shift click polygon, this, extrude it out, bad boat, point one, I looked wrong for a bit, but it's not. Uh, inset it about a bit. Not by that much. And it's like these two edges. So we need that. That's not even the right one. That edge. That edge. That edge. And that edge. Bring them around, connect them once. There we go. Another turbo smooth on it. Oh, okay. Turbo smooth. Add it two. And that gives you a nice little edge for it. Now we will put an FFD modifier, so freeform deformer, on it. And go under control points. Go into a view where you can easily see that it's the top. So yeah, it'll be side where you see it on. That's not working. Take these and scale them up just a touch. It's kind of more like a poofy pillow. Then you can take these ones on the edges and scale them down a bit. And it's got more of a bend to it. Now you can just move these around if you want. Something like that, something like that. And these things should be look like they're lived in. They shouldn't be pristine, square, and everything perfect. The backs really don't matter because we don't see them as much, but the tops certainly do. So I'll take these ones, pull them up a bit, and I'm assuming this is the front of our pillow. Now if we have our FFD modifier on it, put another Edit Poly modifier on it, and just take our push-pull, one brush size of about five since this is a smaller pillow, and brush strength about two five since this is again a smaller pillow. And Alt to hold in if you want to push it in a bit. I'm going to turn on the wireframe so we can see what's happening. And it's bulging out, so we'll do like that a bit. It's a lot of bulge actually, that's a bit too much, so we'll just hit revert. It should revert it back to the morning, however, that's not working nicely for me. So I'll delete out that out of poly modifier. Put another one in. Drop my press strength down to about 0.5. My push pull value to about 0.5. Press size about 5, press strength to about 0.5 again. And this should be much nicer on it. There it is. It's much nicer. Heck, I might even do a bit smaller. That bulges from the FF modifier. And you can have as much fun as you like with that, however. That is good enough for me. And I'll rotate that in. Don't know why it's not hitting. Using the E key, you should rotate for me. Okay, it doesn't want to hit the rotate button for me for some reason. I don't know why. It's like me if he's dead. Well, if that ever happens to you, you can always go up here, select and rotate. But man, that's annoying. Really annoying. I don't know why it's doing that. Uh, I'm just glad I'm not. Soon I'll be back to my production computer. Actually, I'm 
I'm back on Saturday, so Sunday, Sat Sunday, yeah. I'm back on Sunday, so I'll be back on the production computer next week. And just copy these out. And we only get three of them. Copy them out. Put nine degrees, put them back there. And there we go. Nice little couch. Very easily done. And of course you can make these things look different, of course mine all look the same because I just copy and paste them. What you do after that is you select it, you push pull again, and then you do whatever you like with it. I just totally reverted mine out. But, I mean, it's up to you what you do with it. And you can change it around. Change each one of them around. Yeah. Um, I don't want that. And we'll take him, push pull, and just do revert it again. Oh, there. Nice little bulge in the bottom middle of it. And him. Push pull. Right click down the tool. And that is our modern coach. Very easy to do, very quick. As you say, see, I did it in 30 minutes. And it looks good. Once you put a good material on it, it looks even a lot better. Have nice little seams around the edges. With using ambient occlusion, you get a nice little contact shadow right in there. And. Now we will create a table, since it took a lot longer than I did expect it. Or the floor lamp. Hmm. I'm going to do the floor lamp, because I kind of want to do the floor lamp, floor lamp. We'll do the table next week. So the floor lamp is going to be very simple. I'm going to make it a box, 2 by 2 by 6 feet tall. So 24 inches for the width. And 6 feet tall, which is 72 inches. As well, actually, for the couch, before I move on the thing, you want might want to put feet on the couch. So, if you have four, so I can take all you, drag them up. Then you might want to put like two inch feet on the couch. An easy way to do this, because people will very rarely see his feet, but they will notice that it's not raised up any. Take a cylinder. Most couch feet are three inches, two to three inches. So I put two point five, and about two inches. Okay, most coaches are two inches off the ground, it just looks kind of weird because Matt is a very big leg. And then you just put the legs where they're supposed to go. One, two. All the way back to here. One there. Take this one. All the way back here. Take this one, put it over here. This one over here. So they're just all copied out. They're just very quick legs. Take all these again. Drop it down. And there we go. Coach on legs. Alright. So that is the coach. Pretty easy to do. Oh, I'm going to turn J from a bounty box. Man, I missed that. And let's hear this and start working on the. Lamp. So what I'm going to do with this is a very easy thing called a lattice, but, excuse me, what a lattice does is it does require us to think about how we're going to set it beforehand because I'll take the edges of each of our polygons and make an edge, out of, or make one of these boxes out of it. So we kind of want an edge up here, we kind of want these edges every second one, and this bottom one we want four, this top one we want four, like we want to cross around the edges. So, and there's some in the middle, however, not going to be easily able to do that, so we're just going to have to forgo it, or we can add them again later. However, I'm just going to forgo it because I think it'll look cool even without them. All right, so let's convert this to an edible poly. And as you saw before, there was one, two, three, four right down the middle. So we'll connect these two up right straight down the middle. These two up straight down the middle. No, oh, and this one. Yeah, because there's a third one in there. We need to kind of call three up. And I'm going to turn off the window crossing to make sure I can just select those three very quickly. That toggle I just hit was the window crossing. So before it would. Okay. Just making sure I had an edge there. It would only select which is fully enclosed with my marquee. So if I turn it on. Anything is fully enclosed, 
If I turn it off, it's anything that it touches. Very simple thing, but very useful to know. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cross brashes. So connect these four edges eight times. And on every second one, they're connected. No, not eight times. I'm going to have to set this back to two, to one time. And I'll probably go between them. As you can see, I can select like back facing and connect all these once. Very easy way to do it. Let me take all these four. I want this one to cross back on. So only select the edges I've selected. And again, I don't like that because it selects the corner edges. So turn this one to cross it back off. Connect them up again. Check. I'm going to cross them for these ones. Right. And then these last ones down here. Oh, that should not be there. Don't hit delete, just hit remove if you get one like that. Deleting it will cause strange things for you to happen. And you'll all be like, what am I supposed to do? And I won't be able to help you. Ah, uh, I see what happened there. There should be, there's probably Versi in there. Yeah, there's a versary egg there from the accidental edge I created. And connect the model up again. And there we go. That will be our base for it. So now what we do is put an edit poly lattice on it. Not edit poly. We put a lattice on it. And there you go. You can see it starts creating stuff. So we don't want our base that big from the struts. So probably something like one inch thick. And... Yeah, one second's good enough for it. Now, for our corners, we just want them to nicely, snugly fit in there. As you can see, they're not doing that. But they should when we hit one. Yeah, because the one radius and one for both of them will nicely fit them up. Now, what we're going to have to do is put these cross braces in. And a very simple way to do it, create a plane. Create a plane. Same size, so 2 by 2, 24 inches by 24 inches, with 2 in segments, 2 height segments. Make it, put a lattice on it, make it the same dimensions, 1 and 1, I think it's 1. Oh, shoot. 1. Zero it out, and drag it up where we need one. So it'll be like there. Actually, I'm going to put it on top. And put it at the bottom. And then right there. And just actually first what I'm gonna do, since we need the only need the ones that are inside it, convert this to another poly and delete out all the unnecessary polygons. I'm gonna cross and make sure that's turned on so we only hit these polygons, delete them out, take these polygons, delete them out, take these polygons, delete them out. Take these polygons to the back. And if we isolate, select it, you can see that's all we have left, but it works and it fits nicely and snugly in there. Drag these up so it fits in there and there. Drag that up, fit it in there. Drag it up once more and fit it in there. And that is the base for the outline of it. You can always up the sides in this to make it like that. So it's a bit more, I don't know, a bit less boxish. You can also make the radius smaller if you want to. Actually, I kind of like that, the smaller radius with those bigger cross beams. However, it's not going to work well, so make sure you decide on raise before you turn off, before you collapse this to an editable quality so you don't have to redo it again. Now, the next things will be the boxes that we'll have for lamps. And as you see my self illumination tutorial, you can understand how we're going to work with these when we actually make them lights. So, literally, you would just turn on self illumination map, and that would be it. I think they're about 8 inches high between each other, yeah. 72 inches, yeah. 
that makes sense. And now we will these will be the box light boxes. And it should be 12 by 12 by 8 because this is 24 adult together. Daylight box, which where it should be connected to. So you think this should be connected up here. This next one should be round here. Drag this one up. And that one should be over there. And then this last one, drag one more up, and over there. And that will be your contemporary lighting box. Now we're going to create a little box to go on the bottom. Make it about 36 inches, so 3 feet by 3 feet by 2 feet deep, or 2 inches deep. Uh, zero it out to make sure it's straight in the middle. And put it below it by just easily going at negative 2. And that will be the bottom plate right here. Now, next thing we're going to do, we're doing another poly. Take these polygons, the top polygon, make it go in a bit like that. Go to our bottom polygon, inset it by about two inches, and extrude it by another two inches, and by about one inch. And now we are going to start putting in some edge loops so we can smooth it out nicely. So ring this around, connect it twice, drag it out to it there, do the same for this, ring, connect, twice, drag it out, perfect. And then the next one will be this one, this one, and those two will be together, ring, connect up. Not two of that. Actually, we might just be able to get away with one. No, we'll need two. But we won't need any pinch on it to fall a little farther. In this round, connect it up. And only one will be need for that. Actually, no two. And then we'll drag this one in. So once more. And call it good. Next, we'll save that. I haven't even saved this yet. I'm going to do that quickly right now, under basic architecture and uh, stuff inside it. I don't know what I'm doing right now. I'm tired and it's late for me. Use Norm Subdivision, hit F4, turn off, and there you go. Have a nice little base for it as well. Those will be your lamp sides, shades, and there's your lamp. Contemporary. Those things might be need to be a bit smaller, however, that's easy enough to do. I'm going to check my recording time. 52 minutes. Okay, 52 minutes. I hope I'm talking loud enough. Jesus. Alright. I kind of feel bad not doing one little thing. But, yeah, let's make a book. So, books are usually pretty small, however, I don't know exact size. I have a book right here with me, but I don't have any way to measure it. I'd say it's about 5 by 8 by about 1 and a half deep. Yeah, yeah. 4 by 8 by 1.5. Yeah, it looks like my book. I don't know, you know, 1.5, I'm not like it of a reader. 1.25. Okay, so that's the edge of it. Compared to an Emma Poly. Turn on my wireframe so I can see them better. And it's a very simple process. Connect it up. This will be for our edges. This is, of course, a hardcover book. Soft covers are very simple. You don't do really anything. Um, just make a box. That's a soft cover book. Slide that out to about there. Bring it right once in the middle. Take these inset it. No, inset it, jeez. Do not inset it. Extrude it on the local normal axis and down to about 1.5. This one and this one. Connect them up right in the middle. Do the same for this. This should just go all the way around. Connect that up right in the middle. 
take this. As you can see, there's a bit of a edge we need to worry about here. So take this edge, bring it, connect it to, and then drag out the pinch to about there. Do the same for this edge. And drag out the pinch a bit more. And now for the little bit of a bump on the back. I don't know where this is, but I want to find it. Take these and drag them out. Oh, that's not the right way to do it. Okay, I don't know where I am. Right there, these ones. Drag them out just a touch like that. And from there on, just hit use NERM subdivision. There you go, you got yourself a book. Very simple, looks alright. Most times you just see it from the edge, so you can't really notice. If you want to put the seams on it, like on some books, you can do the exact same way we did it with the couch. And there you go, some very simple things to make your houses look cooler, your little architecture things. Next time I'll be back very soon with a with the rest of the stuff I said I would do. So we did the sofa. Well, that's the table, we did not do that. We made a books and we made a light. So the next time you will see the table, the accoutrements, bookcase, bookends, and rugs. Safe it took a lot longer than I expected, so I apologize on that. And yeah, that is this for this tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it. Sorry it was a bit jumpy over the place, especially at the beginning. I will get better again. I'll start writing it down more and actually doing it more. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Hope this helps. And please wait, stay around for the next one. Hope you had fun and enjoy your modeling.